All right, so this is the material you're going to need. A 100% cotton wool. I'm using Burnett Handicrafter Cotton in the color forecast. And I'm just using the recommended um, hook size. So on each, on all of the tags, there's always a spot that looks really similar to this. Um, and I'll tell you the weight of the yarn. So this is a medium weight yarn. Um, what's the recommended needle size if you're knitting and the recommended hook size if you're crocheting, as well as just maintenance, um, maintenance facts for washing it. I mean, if you know what any of this means, I always have to look it up every single time. This should be enough for a couple dish towels. So to start, I always take my yarn from the middle. This is just because it's less likely to unravel on you when you pull center pull, which is taking it from the middle, then unwrapping it from the outside, which is this end here. So taking your yarn, leave yourself about a six inch tail and you're going to do a slip knot. So twist, bring it through like such, pull it. So your knot should be, is correct if you pull on the part connected to your ball and your stitch shrinks. After this, we're going to make our foundation row, which is going to be using some chain stitching. So with with your knot on your hook. I like, oh yeah, also just notes on holding the yarn. I like twisting my yarn around the index finger of my right hand and kind of keep it in place with my like other fingers or sometimes I double knot it or like double, <laughs> double, yeah, double twist it around. So holding it, kind of like, I don't know what a good comparison this is, kind of like a, not like a pencil. Um, some people hold their hooks all the way down here. Other people, I like holding it really close. It's kind of personal preference, but just hold it in a way that it's comfortable and don't like grip it. Just like kind of loosely hold it. And we're gonna do our first chain stitch. So grabbing the yarn, kind of, Move your hook downwards. Ooh, that was a bad example. Downwards and through. So you've just seen what the most probable outcome of your first stitch is gonna be, is that you drop it. Just grab it again. There's no shame in the game. So grab, sort of twist downwards and across, or just pull, pull through. I like twisting downwards, just because it means you're not gonna get yourself bumping into this hook into the stitch here. So this is what four chain stitches look like. So the little V shapes, each V is one chain. So for my dishcloth, I'm going to make mine 20 stitches across. That's gonna be about six inches. Um, really it's personal preference on how far you wanna go. Um, and also this will look a little bit longer than your next row will be. So just be mindful of that. So I've got four, grab, grab, grab. And I didn't tell you what kind of hook I'm using. I'm using the recommended five millimeter US size eight because US decides they have to always have their own name convention for everything. Um, this is, my friend got this when she was living in Australia, so it's made out of Australian wood by Art Viva. You don't have to be so fancy with your, your hook. This just was the only size, the only hook in the size five I can find in my house in a five millimeter. But um, if you go to your local craft store, they will have all the hook sizes and just grab what's recommended for here when you first start off. And then, or if the pattern, if you're using the same yarn as your pattern, just follow what they're recommending. You get to go more rogue as you get gain more experience. 
So pull through. Oops. Ah, see? And don't be discouraged if that's what happens to you the first couple times, is that it doesn't go right away. So yeah, pull. And I would also say, so for tensioning, this is, I'm a really tight crocheter. So I like keeping my yarn a little bit tighter. Don't just tug on it. This is not helpful. Like if your yarn is sort of straining on this side, you, you're done. You, you done bad. So, but you also don't want like this. You want just sort of loosely on your hook so it can kind of shift around a bit. Oops. <laughs> and you just work it through. And also if you drop it, just pick it up, back up. Look for the V's. Oh yeah, and this is what the back looks like. So don't, this is your back. Look for the V's, hook. Don't know how many stitches I'm at. I for, forgot to count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty! I've got two extra. So this is your first row. So this is your foundation row. So next we're going to single crochet all the way across. So to start the row, we're going to make a next one chain stitch. So what we've just been doing, right? And that's this guy here. We're going to actually skip it and go into the V, take our hook and put it in between the little V's here and this piece of yarn here. So in, oops, my God, inwards. like this. So there's going to be three pieces of yarn on your hook. So the two V's of your chain, grab the yarn, pull through, two pieces of yarn on your hook, grab your yarn again, pull through, and there's your first stitch. Ooh, and this is what it looks like on the other side. So in, pull, grab, pull through, and then just sort of adjust your tension. So boom, and you might be noticing that with my fingers, I might be, I'm adjusting it. That's just because I'm very, I'm a very tight tension filled knitter, crocheter, both, both honestly. And that kind of reflects on how much room I give myself to make these stitches. But this is going to be probably the hardest row of your project. I'm telling you right now. As you try to pl place yourself in, the, in your chain. So that's what four looks like. This is what the back looks like. So yeah, you might be seeing me taking my thumbs and sort of twist, moving the stitches around. Um, really, if you're a looser crocheter than me, this will not be the situation. But yeah, just go, like, go through both Vs. You can also just go through one. I know a lot of people that that's how they do it. I personally don't care for how, like it, it, it works, but I personally don't care for how it looks like as the final product. So that's why I, do, I always go through both. But if you are struggling, like if this is not working for you and you feel like quitting, like don't, like definitely just go through one half of it and just be consistent. Keep going on like one side all the way across.
So yeah, if you drop a stitch, just go grab it and Okay, so I'm at my last chain. I know sometimes it might be looking, it'll look a little confusing. And this piece here, oh my God, this piece here might look like a stitch. If it focuses this one, it's not. Cause you can tell how it's a little bit smaller and it's connected to your knot. Just don't, don't try getting yourself involved in that situation. So last stitch, and also just count. You might have gained one, you might have lost one. You'll you'll tell because there's gonna be a bit of a bulky piece. But yeah, like to feel free to count as you're going and making sure that you have a number. And just like, yeah, I'd say keep it to an even number that you can remember. And then that's the last stitch. So this is our first row. Oh, don't she look pretty? And now we're going to come back this way, still doing single crochets. So again, we're going to chain one. So grab, pull through, skip the first, the chain we just, just did in both V's wrap, pull through two pieces, of, two pieces of yarn on the hook, pull through. And then look at that. Put your hook back on because you're being a little overzealous, zealous, overzealous, overzealous. Someone cor correct me. <laughs> in, so you're going down and inwards not well i mean you can just like come up this way and up but i find that that's not like it's just not efficient like you're more likely to stab through parts that you don't want to be involved with so it's coming down it's like the bunny going in the bunny hole grabbing the yarn and across and not so much a worm bursting out grabbing the yarn because that's that's for other, other stuff. Like that's more how you do increases down the line. But for now, just want to have you mastering the single crochet and getting yourself a finished project. So yeah, working your way across, just in, out. And you already might be noticing if you've reached this point, how much easier Maybe. So that, okay, let's actually, I stopped looking for a second and it came and bite me in the butt. Okay, so that is a slip stitch. It's a thing and it's useful, but this is not what you want to do right now. So make sure that you are sort of doing like the three kind of steps, which is going, grabbing, so you have two. So your second step, you should have two pieces of yarn on your hook and then pulling through, which is like the third step of the process. So in, pull. And you might be noticing I like to use my index finger as a sort of stabilizer behind my stitch and just help pull things through. I don't think that's part of the official way of doing it, but I definitely notice it helps. But that's also because again, my hand is super close to the hook when I crochet, I know some people, they like do it back here and definitely use their pointer finger as more of a support piece. But there's like, gosh, I can't even do the example of what I'm showing, but I, I've seen people do it and they do it way more gracefully than I do. So like in grab and across, but again, whether you're far or close on the hook, that is honestly whatever you feel comfortable with. And just across, pull more yarn.
and last stitch of the row. So this is what we have. Two rows in plus our chain foundation row. Gotta get this guy out of the way. So for your dishcloth, you can definitely just keep going until you have a square of just single crochet. Keep going. You'll have a beautiful dishcloth that's definitely going to stand the test of time. But I'm going to be a little, a little cheeky and I'm going to teach you what a double crochet is and kind of get a little pattern going in your dishcloth. So to start a row of double, double crochets, chain one, wrap your yarn around your hook, skip your chain you just made, go in the stitch like you're going to do a single crochet, pull through. Oh my, I have three on my hook. So pull through one. I still have three on my hook. Pull through two and then pull through again. So wrap in three on the hook, slide it through one loop, slide it through two loops, slide it. Oop, oh my God. If, okay. Yeah. So if your yarn splits as you do it, I always just try to bring it back to a point where I can see everything and nothing's hooked or anything like that and just try it again. Downside of cotton is that it splits way more than acrylics and other yarns. So that's what we've got so far and we're going to add it, keep going all the way across. And you'll notice that your row of double crochets is taller than your rows of single crochets. I mean, because they're kind of taking twice as much space and a little, a little, little holy. All right, so I've just double crocheted all the way across and I wanted to show you something that a lot of new crocheters get hung up on. So here's my last stitch and there's this little hanging bit here. This is the chain from my previous row when I was making this row this way. This is not a stitch. Don't try to go in here because you're going to add on stitches that you didn't mean to put onto your project. So just do my last double crochet. God. I don't know why I'm trying to tutorial. This is the bad hook for this because the indent isn't, you know what? No, I'm not going to try to make excuses. It happens. And I just want you to see the most authentic me struggling, me kind of regretting trying to teach you guys double crochet, but I think it's important. Okay. So this is my project so far. It is six inches wide and one inch tall. So I'm going to single crochet all the way across continuously until I have a project that is five inches tall and then do kind of the opposite here, double crochet and then two rows, a single crochet. And yeah, let's, uh, let's do this. Yeah. So just remember chain one and then do your stitches all across. And when you're doing, um, single crochets after a row of double crochets. It's the same thing. Just make sure you're putting your hook in here in this like gap here and not here in the big gap. And yeah.
So I'm at five inches in total. So, which is 17 single crochets since my double crochet trim piece. So that's what my next row is going to be. So chain, wrap, in, in there, chain, wrap, or So we double crocheted across, so we're going to make three rows of single crochet, and we will have a beautiful dishcloth. So, chain, So the next little bit is where I dropped the ball and just was recording everything as a time lapse instead of an actual video. So I'm going to just try to explain it all in voiceover. So I just finished it up. You just kind of take your yarn, you cut it about six inches away, and you just pull it through all the way through. And then taking a tapestry needle, you will be threading your excess yarn through your project, sort of following the natural knots of your work. It's not anything really too precise. Just kind of go with the flow. And once you've done that about like a half dozen times, you can just cut off the extra thread, do that on both sides, and then you're all done. And you're ready to use your dishcloth. Just a fun fact, the first time you use it, or the first couple times you're gonna use it, it's going to be really bad at absorbing water. That's just because the cotton fiber is really tight and the more you use it the more those fibers open up and the more it can absorb and you will be golden um, so i hope you enjoyed that feel free to comment any questions down below um, or subscribe like this video i don't know do whatever follow me on instagram <laughs> and i hope you have a good one bye